Good evening, everyone. It's Tom Sidney Bushnell, aka Numbers, here from Site Club, from News with Tom Numbers, top of your game. And uh, which one did I forget? Site Club, News with Tom Numbers, top of your game, and the Tom Numbers show. There you go. There you go. So this will be an edition of News with Tom Numbers. And I've got my buddy, Matt Geiger from Midas Gold, who's sponsoring the show for us. How are you, buddy? It's been a week well. or so since I last seen you. I know. I know. Well, I was in your chat on uh, the weekend with when you were hosting Juan. That was a really good uh, – you gave some really interesting information. I had to go, like, right before the end, so I almost have to go back and rewatch it because there's some things that I heard that he said at the end. Yeah. And, he know, left us on a cliffhanger about the New Jerusalem. Like, he did. And, like, the gold into the heavenly city. I was like, what? Oh, go, go. Yeah, it was a great interview though. I always I always enjoy you and Juan. That was cool. Um nice to see everybody in the chat. Shout yeah, out to SB Neverland. Shout out to who? SB Neverland. Yeah, he was just in my chat. Well, they were just in my chat. Um just now I just did with Jetson, Jetson White part one. And then Jetson got hit by a a uh, lightning strike. Not him literally, but they had a power outage the lightning strike then we got back in touch so that's part two has been recorded that's going out tomorrow so people see that so depends it's when you're watching it they might have already gone out with them but there's two parts to jetson so yeah. yeah they wouldn't they wouldn't care if i told you that's uh aaron and bill it was bill's birthday the other night on uh tuesday that's night. it yeah they emailed me yeah yeah, yeah happy we birthday aaron and bill yeah we yeah. went out to dinner it was a good time we had fun yeah, they're good. They're always in the chat. It's really good. Thank you for supporting yeah. it. I appreciate it. I actually, I rely on them to follow all this stuff like throughout the day because I'm so busy here. And it's like, yeah. I'm like, guys, give me some cliff notes. Like, what's going on? Yeah. And I said, they, they keep me informed. That's good. It's good to have people yeah. like that. I've got a few yeah. that do that kind of organically from point stuff out because we need to use the turn start to time travel or the time travel machine to produce many versions of ourselves so that we can keep up with it. I think yeah. it'd be good to have maybe three of me, maybe six, maybe nine of me. That would be good. Maybe there are, but I'm not aware yet. Just create an it's... army of you. I know. <laughs> it'd be like, like Agent Smith and the Matrix, just like loads of us. <laughs> or lots of Neos. Was there ever a time when there were lots of Neos? I can't remember. Probably not. But um, so. Yeah. So well, what's been happening? And what's happening with... What's happening in the market? What's happening in gold? I saw President Trump's. I got a little bit of it. I saw his uh, media stock DJT went out last week, and I didn't time it properly. I should have got in just before it went up. And then, anyway, I've got some. So it's Trump stock. So it's like, yeah, you know, just get some and then just let just let it sit. So yeah. Well, I thought it was interesting they wouldn't let him at the stock exchange, which I found to be kind of an interesting thing. Where they wouldn't let him go in. They wouldn't let him go in. So, so he, he couldn't wanted, ring the bell when it tried ring the bell. And uh, I think that's very telltale of the stock market, right? It's a club and you ain't in it. And uh, yeah. I think that, that really speaks volumes about, you know, who's running the show, who's running the markets, right? I mean, arguably the stock market's just computer programming, right? It's just started by Alan Greenspan, right? Alan Greenspan digitized the stock market. That's probably why Trump's never been in the stock market because he knows it's just a, you know, it's it's a wealth transferring machine, right? These yeah. these these big, you know, booms and busts, it's like, yeah, there's booms and people make a lot of money, but then there's the busts and that money just transfers to the top and all the people that had the inside baseball on how to yeah. pick the, you know, pick the winners, you know, they don't, they don't worry about booms and busts because they're just always booming. That's how Nancy Pelosi's, uh, you know, worth hundreds of millions of dollars on a government salary. It's because she's yeah. the insider trader of, of insider traders. That's it. They can do that. I remember just a week, no, maybe a month, three, four weeks ago, I was talking to Charlie, Charlie Ward, and and he was, uh, he's a big, you know, uh, commodity, gold, silver guy. You know, people know Charlie's story, but he was talking to me about the stock market. It came up. I think it's when you, you and me were talking about how a lot of the big whales have come in and taken yep. stuff out, and then you verified it. So we were talking about that, and Charlie just said he's never really done the stock market, or if ever. Um, because he just he said he's never really seen anyone really make much on it. It's just it goes in, and like you say, certain people take bits out. And you know, it doesn't really go. It just kind of is there. I know there's other people that do it and they make a steady rate of return. But he just and don't get me wrong, Charlie likes them. You know, he loves a pound note. So it was like 
he's never bothered with the stock market because he couldn't see how people could make money out of it, you know. So I only it's, got this Trump one because I was like, well, it's good to just be part of it. And whether it goes sideways up, round and round, inverse reverses doesn't exist, and I don't know, but it's like it's Trump stuff. So it's like, yeah, I think it's good to just show your support. So that's why I've done that one. So investing is a long-term strategy, right? You don't invest to make, you know, 300% this year. You invest over time in things that you think are going to be worth something over time. Yeah. You know? And so gold and silver, I'd be the first one to say, are not an investment. You know, it's, it's a place to store the value of your money when you see problems coming, right? It's, it's a, a preservation mint. Yeah. The preservation say, it's a preservation mint. It's a preserve. Juan, Juan quoted somebody, and I'll just use Juan, Juan's quote of somebody else's quote, but when a wise man sees trouble, he gets out of the way. Right. That's good. That's, That's a good quote. What it really boils down to, it's it's really simple stuff. Gold's up, you know, gold's hitting, I think, 2,300 right now. Silver about 27. To me, it's whatever. Is silver up to $27? 27. It's been there before. It's been in the high 20s before. I don't, Has you it? know. I think not the whole- Not long ago, it was around 18, 19, $20, wasn't it? No, not that low. It's probably about 23 about twenty. Okay, I'm think oh, I'm thinking of pounds. I'm thinking of sterling. The conversion. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. yeah. Um, so silver's yeah, gone up a bit, but gold's gone up more. Would that be yeah, fair? I, yeah, I mean, I would say it's it's not a big deal to the. Don't I don't want people feeling like you know FOMO, fear of missing out. Like, oh, I missed the boat on gold, and you know, missed the boat on silver because it's up a little bit. It's like, no, you yeah. haven't. We're just getting started, actually. Yeah. Uh, I, I look at it as, you know, kind of what I said in prior episodes is when the big money starts to figure out the stuff that, you know, we figure out, you know, I talk to guys, you know, I have friends of mine that are worth tens of millions of dollars. You know, let's say my friend's stock portfolio, conservatively speaking, might be $10 million. So let's say he's got all dividend paying stock. Maybe that dividend pays six to 8%. Well, just for holding that stock, no matter what the market does, he's making six, 800 grand a year just for holding the stock. Yeah, it's very hard for people in that mindset to give up that stock and be like, hey, I got to take cover. Well, when these guys figure out, you know, people, the the you know, the whales out there, when they figure yeah. out the real problems, they're going to be flocking to gold and silver and that supply is going to dry up like that. So that's yeah. why us, us little peasants, we have to get our hands on uh, as much of this stuff before, you know, if you have knowledge into the Patriot community and you understand what's going on and the system, how it has to change. You want to get your, that's the urgency here. If I was to sit here and create some sense of urgency, that would be it. It's when the big money starts to figure out, hey, we got to exit this doom system. That's when supply just dries up. So you got to be a little preemptive. You know, you got to see the, mm. right. You got to say, okay, you know, when are events going to happen? I think they're going to happen soon. So you get up, you, right. You call me here, right. You have my number right there on the screen. Give me a call and we'll get yeah. you set up. Read you out know, your number, call. Matt. What is it? 480. Uh, 480-725-0536. And that's my yeah. phone direct. Yeah. And I answer my own calls. Yeah, give Matt a call. And uh, we know people in the, our audience have been getting in touch, getting their portfolio yeah. sorted out. So thank you for those who have joined up with Matt. And Kathy was on just a couple of weeks ago and said how much of a great service you and the company had offered. So, um, you know, great. she didn't have to do that. But she wanted to because she she believes in you. She trusts you. She was very happy with what she received. So if you want to be in the similar, then give give Matt a call. And as time goes on, it's 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 inevitable. We're going to reach that point where it all goes cuckoo, and it's going to be a question of can you get it? You know, that's, can you get that's, it? That's the that's the question. Can you get it? It's, there will be a time where doors are closed. You know, and it's you know the like, miners. You know the let's say, uh, you know, because when you look at spot price, spot price is really just the paper price of gold and silver, right? And, you know, they could turn around and slam the spot price down to whatever they want. They could slam it to 500 bucks, right? So if people are sitting there waiting for, but what are dealers like us going to do? We're going to, we're going to sell our inventory at a loss when we know that the paper market is just manipulation of gold and silver price. No, if anything, the premium will be $2,000, Right. So just mm. you have a five hundred dollar an ounce cost on on paper, right? Spot price, but the premium to get that ounce of gold will be two thousand dollars. So now you have twenty five hundred dollar gold. Right. And that could trickle Good down. Point. And I thought of it like that. Yeah, if they change it that end, you guys that physically have it, 
you you know that it's a it's a, a scam a manipulation you're going to hold it you're not going to sell it yeah, yeah. unless that, unless people pay through the nose for it and then what are the miners going to do the miners are going to sit there and be like okay we know that gold's really worth 2500 or 3000 or 5000 we're not going to we're not going to produce until you show us that price so now yeah. the gold and silver that they're mining out of the ground isn't coming boom you don't you you got no supply in the marketplace so there's all kinds of things that could happen yeah. Uh, in terms of just being able to get your hands on the physical product. And yeah. that's the case I would make to somebody right now with everything going on. I mean, another bridge collapse. I mean, we're hearing it's the white hats, right? The good guys trapping in ships, warships, right? Huh. Preventing, preventing uh, uh, hazardous material being shipped. That could be a good thing, right? If you look mm -hmm. at it in a different way. this These are examples of things ramping up. This is, right? This is go time. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is no election in 2024, if you ask me. I don't see it. 2020, it's not over yet. It's true. I do think that date, though, whether we have an election or not, I mean, I see it could go that they just somehow get it done and then it's taken again and then, you know, military move in. That would be one possible option. Maybe something else happens that we haven't seen yet. But I do see that. I see that point as a marker, as an X in the sand. And I think from that point on, we start to see things really drastically improve. I think it's a, I think it's, um, you know, I've, I've nicknamed you Vincent from Collateral, Tom Cruise's film. And uh, you could actually be, um, Vincent. you could actually be the protagonist. He's a different color from you. So John David Washington, have you seen Tenet? Have you seen the film Tenet? No, you told me to watch this. I gotta watch this. You gotta watch it, buddy. All right. You gotta watch it. But he wears during the film, he wears a nice kind of silvery suit. Um and uh John David Washington actually is two seventeen, Mission Impossible. Tom Sidney Bushnell, two seventeen, Lady Diana Francis Spencer, two seventeen, um, Houses of Parliament, two seventeen. So there's um yeah, there's anyway, so that film talks about two timelines happening at once. So there's some that have been reversed and you can see them physically move, like moving backwards. I actually saw a tweet on it. I think uh, the real Kim Shady, Kim put it out and I saw it and you saw people look like maybe DC and just regular folk walking. And then you saw troops walking backwards, <laughs> which is what happens in the film Tenet. And I think somehow this, this movement, this, this thing that's going on, this operation that's going on somehow leads to November 5th. That's, that's what I keep getting. Um, and it could be that we reach the, I think we'll have a victory because Jubilee is 64 in numbers, Tenet is 64, Israel is 24, uh, uh, 64. But it could be, something's coming. I don't know exactly what it is, but it is tied into the election. It's tied into the number 310. Um, someone put out a tweet today, another Kim, and uh, she had a picture of Melania, Melania Trump, 143, November 5th, 143. And President Trump and they dressed as cowboys. And it was to do with it said, right, it's time to put, you know, Biden and all that lot take, put them on the train, which is what happens with prisoners in in 310 to Yuma. And I was like, that's what I've been talking about. So I did a tweet on it and she actually put out you have to look at my Twitter because I forgot, but I did there's a whole thing on the best is yet to come. Um it tied into the tenet, the temporal pincer movement, um, November 5th, the whole thing. It was great. It was really good. People are getting all these other things are all getting, we're all kind of getting them in different places. And then it's like, oh, they've mentioned it. They mentioned yeah. it again. And then we just tie them all together, you know. So speaking of trains, have you seen those videos where they've turned like targets and like some of these big stores into like prisons that they were going to use to No. You never heard about any of this? So hang on. So Target, like the department store, yeah. It's an apartment store where they would like people would go to that target and shop, but there were some other areas that were like, you think it was a gardening center, but then when you look very carefully, it's a prison. Whew. And the way the target was built, you know, it's, it's basically, you know, you could, you could turn a target into a prison very easily. Right. Wow, it had all like the Walmart and target and other places. Yeah. And there was like train tracks next to the target. So <laughs> I heard, insane. yeah, I heard that these people have been building the, essentially the, you know, the camps to round yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Conservatives and Republicans had Hillary one round us up, put us in these in these different places, right? Train tracks right there to 
escort us wherever. I heard that those are going to be now used against them, where they're going to be rounded up and put in these. Exactly, they will. That's it. That's that's everything that is happening. It's like everything it's that they tried. Yeah, it's a yeah. reversal. It's a it's a temporal pincer movement. <laughs> that's what it is. Temporal pincer movement it, and uh, movement is uh, is one hundred seven, which is currency quantum military. So it's a temporal pincer military. Temporal pincer is one six five. Resurrection, other physics. Christ Trump. I put the post out that I mentioned about the the other uh, Kim, and uh, she said, you know, did the bit with President Trump and Melania, saying, right, you got to take him to the station now as the Cowboys, which is three ten to humor reference. And I put a screenshot of because Christ Trump, Frederick Christ Trump, that was Donald's dad, and Christ Trump is seventy seven. Super powerful number. Trump is 88, super powerful number. And together there's 165, resurrection, other physics, temporal pincer, which is the key principle that is in the film Tenet. You know, so it's, yeah, that's, wow. Is that, was that, what was that on? You saw that about Target? I saw was it on? years ago on YouTube. There was, there was. Oh, you saw that... it ages ago. Okay. Yeah, this is like before. You see it again, gone. send it. I'd love to see that. That makes yeah. so much sense now you've said that though. There was, there was a couple people that would go to these big, you know, big stores, like it's specifically Target. That was one. Yeah. Um, there might have been some others. And they showed you, they're like, what the heck is this? Makes interesting. It makes you think right. about the name now, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of these videos where it was just different people putting them up. And they were, they were in like Southern California, a lot of them. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> maybe some other other spots in the country. Well, talking of California, so California is 88. So there's good and bad sides to the numbers, you know, and everything will be flipped around. But Walmart is the same value as Epstein. And so when you're saying there's train tracks and stuff, it's like, wow, you know. Look at the Walmart logo. I heard what's that. It the like? six I'm trying to th yeah, what's it like? It's the six prongs. Yeah. And it looks like if you if you put the the logo right next to one of those big drills that drills out earth, you know, like for tunnels, tunneling under yeah. earth. It's the six prongs. Huh. So like deep underground military bases, dumbs. Bunkers, like said, your symbolism will be their downfall. So I guess when yeah. people Fidelity Investments here, we'll give Midas Gold Group another plug. Midas Gold uh Fidelity Investments. It's got the it's got the pyramid and the Fidelity yeah. logo. Like the all-seeing eye. Fidelity Investments. So what they're, I don't know what they are. They're the largest, I think they're the largest custodian in the world. They have more money under their management than I think anybody other than probably even, I, I think in terms of stock investments, I think they have more really? money than custodian, yeah. Wow. So all these people, I mean, when I do IRAs, 401ks, one of the things I show people is I say, look at that logo. And if they're privy to the information you talk about and a lot of the mm. patriots talks about, they're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's all out in the open. It is. It's hidden in plain sight. Because that's that's sight. one thing about this game. And I do think, we've said it before, I, I think it's a game of some description, you know, like a big virtual reality something we're in. And uh, it, it does seem, though, that one of the rules of the game is that both sides have to show what they're doing, particularly the bad ones through the symbolism. Right. They have to show it. And then they're like, because they believe, well, we told you, even if you didn't come up and t they tell you through symbolism, through through uh, humor, it's sick humor, but they tell you, you know, they'll tell you in their TV shows, in their films that are sponsored and funded by, you know, the dark side. And they'll tell you in those things. But I've also noticed that, because it's it's the two sides together, you know, they're one without the other. I think that's what creates the three D. But I've noticed as I go into it more and more, there's so many more good things in in the films as well that weren't really apparent at first, but then they pop up because we're becoming more aware, we're becoming more enlightened and more awakened. Um, but they're in there, yeah, they're they're in there. Talking of the film Tenet, and you talked about the tunnels, so there's a bit towards the end of the movie where there's, there's a, an operation in Ukraine of all places. And that took place before the events in Ukraine. And uh, 
there's a part, a brief part where they're running through tunnels. Army soldiers are running through tunnels to complete the rescue. And, and they talk about child's play. They talk about lockdowns. And they show the movement of gold. They have a whole bunch of gold falling out of the back out of, out of the back end of a, of a 747 airplane. They also put in certain logos, symbol logos of, of not good stuff, but they show it in the film so people can see what it's about because there's all these free ports. They call them the free ports where people can exchange goods in these containers. And in the film, they talk about it being high value paintings and they call it a Goya and Goya comes to Sun 48. And uh, President Trump and Ivanka did references to it. They did the double play on the words of Goya, the, the Mexican food brand, Goya. But it's in the film Tenet. But Tenet, I, in my opinion, it's a cut when they're talking about the, the precious cargo of the painting. It's actually talking about, um, you know, little ones and people being moved around. That's what it's. That's what it's With, about. Uh, I just got done watching the second Dune movie, Dune Two. Oh yeah. What does spice come to? Spice. So look. We used to have a thing here with the Spice Girls, which were, well, it was global, but starting. And then they had footballers called the Spice Boys. But pe people have said stuff about both sides on well, one side of that. Um, love a look at Spice. Spice. S P I C E. Ah, Spice. Okay. So Spice. <laughs> Spice is Q35. So on one side, you've got 35th president, JFK, add ice, uh, comes to Q35, but 52. So spice is 52. 52 is, uh, is salt. 52 is earth. Um, what what were you thinking about spice in the movie? Because I haven't seen it. So what what was the thing of spice? Well, spice is the commodity that runs the world. Ah, if you control spice production, you you run essentially the world. Okay. What else does it do then? Yeah, it's a drug. You can trip on it. That's what I was going to say. So and it's kind of red in color, yeah. Red in color, yeah. Yeah. So we know what that's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And calms yeah. there for sure. It's a good movie. I mean, honestly, I thought it was the second one was great. I saw the first one. The first one was a snoozer, but it's actually done very well. The fighting scenes were like incredible. The first one was a snoozer, wasn't it? Snoozer. Total snoozer. Are you talking about because because there's so there's, there's old ones too, right? There's an old yeah. So I'm yeah, trying to see both, the and this, yeah, I know what you mean. So the second one, but the new first one. one. Yeah, the okay. new first one was a total snoozer. But, I mean, some people really <laughs> like that story. I had never heard the story. Somebody had told me, hey, go watch the movie. You'll love it. I sat there for, you know, almost three hours. And I'm like, it's not a very good movie. But yeah. Um, then my one of my colleagues here, he he was in California. He um, he saw the second one and said it was really good. So I took a chance and it was, it was actually a very good movie. It's well done. All yeah. communications aside. Well, Timothy Chamelay the main guy in that film. So he's in, I think I mentioned to you on the other show. So he's in uh, Interstellar, the Nolan film. And he's yeah, the he's one, done. he's the kid, he's the young kid called Tom. Yeah. He, he's the son in that, you know. And I think um, they're going to cast him as the new Bond. Timothy Chalamet. I think they're going to cast him as the new Bond. Really? Yeah. Wow. There's um what's his name Aaron Taylor such and such he's got a hyphen name he's he's in the Tenet film the soldier training guy at the end well the last third that I heard they were talking about him being a Bond but I didn't know that about Timothy Chalamet really I just see it in like my you know I get these feeds on my phone that I have no interest in and I just came across the information the other day wow that's interesting so Spice is fifty two uh, Clan is fifty two. K L A A yeah A double N. Uh, Earth is fifty two. Heart is fifty two. 
six is 52. So there's good and bad sides to, you know, both sides of the numbers. But it's interesting when you were saying that about spice, I felt that's exactly what you were referring to. And then when, you know, your colleague just, just kind of verified it, I was like, oh, that's what they're on about. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that is, that's the, that's been the hidden currency of the earth. And we hardly any of us knew about it, you know. We were told in movies and but but we didn't believe, you know, it was like, oh, it's that. So it was always in kind of folklore, not that name, not the full name, but the actual principles of it. Um, that principle that's not even probably the best way to say it, but you know what I mean? It was it was it was the round. You'd hear it in, you know, horror films and other stuff, and but you did you never well, I never felt, I never thought, oh yeah, that's the case. And then I was like, Oh, I've been meaning to ask you. I've been meaning to ask you. Everybody wants to know when you're coming to uh, the U.S. That's a good question. I want to know the answer to that as well. So I was hoping to maybe have come a month or so ago because I still want to do the whole flying learning. Um, I was thinking of coming to the eclipse. I don't think that will be the case now. That's only a few days away. Four days um, away. Yeah. So I want to, and you'll be the first to know, buddy, for sure. As soon as I know, I'll let you know because I want to come out and do Sedona with you and James and um i'll just have to hey you can always stay with me you know yeah that'd be great you've got a great pat yeah i, I yeah. got a guest room so yeah yeah that'd be fun i'd love to and i will at some point and as soon as i know i will let you know um i guess from my perspective here i'm just getting on doing you know working living yeah. and yeah and uh and also obviously watching the picture because it's it permeates everything we do and just seeing what's going on because i'm like I guess a little part of me is like, it'd be great to go out there. I don't want to suddenly get stuck out there <laughs> if something happens. But we can't live our lives like that either, you know. Um, yeah. We could yeah. be, you know, there might be a period for the next month or two where it's okay to do all that stuff. I, I don't know. I haven't got a crystal ball. Um, I do get thoughts and things that come through and some seem to be, you know, near the target and others might be, near the target, but on a two or three year loop, maybe, you know, so yeah, but I, you'll be the first to know, buddy. I want to come out. It'd be great. It'd be great to be out there with you. you know? A lot of people want to see you. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be yeah, great. A lot of fun. We'll take you for a great time. Sedona's beautiful. I mean, we go up there, try to get up there as much as I can. I'd love to live up there too, but it's just, you know, yeah. like, he's like, get a plane and fly to the, you know, cause it's only a half hour flight. I'm like, I ain't flying planes, man. I, I hate flying. I was up in this little plane. I was like, I hated every second of it. it was, I mean, I wouldn't say that, but like you feel the air under you. I know. You know you dropping out. It's just like, ugh, don't. I know. Don't enjoy I think that. it's the thing. If you're if you're the pilot, if you're the one in control, I don't know. I think I've said this to you, not to you, actually. I said it to, I know where I said it. So Michael Gambon, Dumbledore from Harry Potter. Right. I did a video with him before, back in 2016. And it's my first Tom Numbers show put in with with numbers so we just added the got we added right. the numbers in afterwards and bless him he's passed on now michael but he was you know he was uh i he was my uncle michael from the movie so he was a good guy and uh but he was a pilot and he was telling me how when he was younger he would do these circuits and bumps where they would have to basically go flying around hit the tarmac come back up all in one motion and then he'd have to do these kind of James Bond things where they let the little Cessna fall out of the sky and they'd have to recover it. That was all part of the training. And I said, you are James Bond. He said, I am James Bond. Because he, you know, joked about him. He met Cubby Broccoli, you know, to potentially, you know, be James Bond amongst other actors. And I was, I said to him, there was a guy called Ray. I've lost touch with him. This was about 20 years ago. And he took me to the Isle of Wight which I'm not far away from now, but he took me to the Isle of Wight for my birthday. One lunch, one afternoon. And uh, we're in this little plane, little Cessna. And it was like, Mister, I don't know if you remember Mr. Magoo, the cartoon. I do. So he bless him. This guy, Ray, was like Mr. Magoo. <laughs> and I felt totally sick throughout the whole journey. And I was told by someone else that flew planes not long after that. They said, yeah, there's a little thing you've got to adjust on the rudder and it'll stop that kind of motion. But I think it's partly... If you're the pilot, you know when the jump, you know, you're in control of it. But if you're the passenger, <laughs> like you would say, you feel every bump. But I felt yeah. literally sick on that little plane. Um, oh. I've been in other ones like that where I didn't feel that way, but I, that one I did. 
and you apparently just have to adjust it. And Michael Gambon said, yeah, if you, you know, it should be okay. But yeah, it's bumpy for sure. Yeah. But I still want to learn it. I actually went to an airfield here to look a few months ago just to go and check it out and have a feel of it. And then I was talking to you guys about it. I was like, the warmer option might be the better option. But we'll see, you know. But you'll be the first to know, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll let James know. He'll take you up. Yeah. Maybe the three yeah. of us will fly to Sedona for lunch. Have you got any have you got any um events coming up? Any things that you're doing? You were talking about events that were gonna take place or they happened or they in the works or I do I uh I do like events where I get in touch with kind of the local community, you know, just yeah. to kind of introduce Midas Gold Group, you know, because it's like we serve obviously the entire country, but yeah. I also kind of want to make it more of an impact locally, you know, and get some, yeah. you know, parents of students and things like that. I think with the news cycle and everything going on, I think people are pretty receptive to the idea of, Hey, you know, let me convert some money to gold and silver. Yeah. So I'm doing some events. Uh, I was going to host it in my house, but um, a friend of ours, her house is very nice. And she was more than gracious to um, want to host it for us. And, you know, a friend of both of us or someone that you know, uh, you might know her. her. Name is Corin. She knows you. She watches your show regularly. Corin and Michelle Stapley. Um, she's another one. She's friends with Mickey, right? They all know Mickey. Um, great group, great group of okay. ladies. Okay, it's They're, ringing some bells. Michelle Stapley. Yeah, she's you. You. We had her on your podcast when we were in Yuma. They were the two the women that said hi. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's it. Yeah, yeah. true from the bells. Yeah, yeah. Video. Yeah, okay. the two of them. Yeah. They're terrific. They are very supportive of you know what we do here. You know, they always put a good word out for for Midas in general. They watch your show. You know, they're so they're probably watching this episode. So hey, ladies, thank you. Yeah, how you we're doing, um We're doing something in May, early May, uh, for an event, and then like we do like these little conservative events where like. The other week, last week, I was like with, you know, the guy Officer Tatum. I don't know if you've ever seen his channel. Officer Tatum? Officer Tatum. The ah. Officer Tatum. He's just like okay. one of these nice enough guy, you know, just very mainstream conservative news, you know. Yeah. Not like the deep, interesting stuff that you get into, right? But uh, <laughs> just nice guy, you know, great guy. Um, You so know what? This is funny. So I was about to mention a friend of mine. I've mentioned him before. But I should connect you with him, my buddy Chad Howie. He's a big mainstay in, in Mesa, and he might be good for business wise for you too. Actually, might be. He's really good. He's a really good salesman. And anyway, he's got a sis his sister's Tatum. So I was just thinking about Chad, and you just brought up Officer Tatum. I was like, all right, I'm gonna. That's how it works. So I'm gonna mention. I'm gonna mention Chad to to uh, to Matt. So, um, yeah, wow. Fun. You, know, you get. You What's fun about the events is like, you know, people you meet, you know, I always like the people that come up to the booth or, you know, we do the private events. It's always like yeah. very like minded people. So you meet your best friends at these things. Like I talk to clients and they're tucked away in some part of the country. They're like, I'm surrounded by liberals. I'm like, you should come out here. I'll let you know when an event <laughs> happens. Come out here. You'll meet your your new best friends. Yeah. That's how it works, yeah. man. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. I got these people yeah. in California. They're trapped around neighbors of just Biden supporters. Yeah, I didn't know they existed. Biden supporters. I didn't even think they. I didn't think there was many, but I guess there in some pockets there are some. There are some. They're real. NPCs are real. Apparently, you'll find them in New York and L.A. <laughs> Is that true? Is because I remember a few weeks ago hearing that the Trumps. Well, I, I think Eric was saying it that the Trumps are going to move out of New York. Is that true, or is that a soundbite? I wouldn't see him moving out of New York. I want to. I think what he will do is save New York from itself. That's what I've always thought. Is like Batman's going to save New York. You know? Yeah, he ain't yeah. leaving. He ain't leaving. Yeah. But was that a new? Did 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 Eric say that at some point? Like we're gonna, we you know, we're gonna. They have did. To go. They did. They moved his primary residence before COVID. They moved his primary residence from New York down to Florida. Right. So right. that so was Trump, the Trump Tower will still be there. I don't see him giving that up. And he owns many buildings in New York. It's not just Trump Tower. Yeah. The Plaza. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So his, but his main residence is, I believe, Mar a Lago. I think that's his main residence now. I think that is. And the reason for that is Winter White House is 222, which comes to 
Wyndham, New Yorker, the Tesla Time Travel Hotel. And 222 is uh, a thousand years apiece. You know? Something I would Something I'd recommend to your viewers is pick up the March 2000 George magazine with the Tiffany Blue George with Trump on the cover. And the he uh, and George magazine talks about uh, how Mar-a-Lago actually was Kennedy's winter White House, President Kennedy. Yeah, there's some very interesting history in that. Rachel's done a video on it. Watch Rachel's video yeah. on the Right Side Blonde channel. I think she's on she's on YouTube and Rumble. So but Trump, because I'd heard that about Kennedy. And Mar-a-Lago, and then the Kennedys have another place near, is it Beth Cedar, near the church? Or they'd go to the church up there. So, so Kennedy Jersey? would, sorry? You're talking about Bedminster, New Jersey? Not Bedminster, so about two or three miles north, literally. So if you go from Mar-a-Lago up, yes. there is a, there's a church got, um, there, and I think that's where the Kennedys used to go. He's got another church. one down. I think it's he, Beth Beth Seder or something like that. I could be yeah, mispronouncing um, it. It's near one of the other big nice prop. There's a the uh the Breakers Hotel, which is a gorgeous place. Like it's lit up at night on the beach and everything. It's right next to that. I think it's Beth Seder. I anyway. went down to South Beach. I went down to South Beach a couple months ago because um somehow I was potentially gonna be able to get into Mar a Lago. And it was with Juan. Right. And I get to South Beach. Me and my girlfriend, we land and the, the plans fell through. And I was like, okay. Okay. You know, spent the weekend in, you know, right by in right by where Mar a Lago is. And I actually went over the bridge, you know, because there's a drawbridge to get into the area of Mar a Lago. There's a drawbridge. And went over that bridge and just kind of hung out. Yeah. Like right on the water by Mar a Lago. And you, you know, you could kind of see it through the trees, but um yeah. beautiful time year to go. I mean, I wasn't complaining. A weekend in South Beach, Florida. Yeah. Well, if you want to go, or if you end up going there for other reasons, you want to go. There's a couple of guys I know that are members. So I've been there. I went there one afternoon. Um, and Chris is a really cool guy. You two would get on well. He reminds me a lot of Don Jr., but he's, yeah, I could connect you with him. But he, so he's friends with another guy that, that is a member there. And that's how I went that. I went there 13th of November 2021 for an afternoon. And talking to Kennedy, so what? So what? I need to study this, but do you know it? So, so Kennedy, did he own it or just reside there as the president when he was I president? Think, I'm wondering if Joe Kennedy owned it. I don't think I don't think Joseph Kennedy did own it. I just know that Kennedy picked his entire White House staff from there. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think it was that woman, the Post. Woman with the last name Post. She owned it. Post. Trump it. Yeah, Post. It's an art of the deal, right? He bought it for like twenty five million dollars. Okay. There's higher offers for it, but I guess Trump got it for less. Maybe he made certain promises in the future. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, you know what's really interesting about it is, um, so Trump's portrait. So you go in. And then you, it's kind of, I'm probably doing that. So you go in and then to the side. And is that him in the tennis it. outfit? Is that him in the tennis outfit with the That's white? It. Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in there, so I was in there, I was waiting in there and then I met with um, Mr. Bernard and the other guy that I'd gone there with. And um, anyway, so Trump's, it's, it's called the library bar. So quite often he's done it a few times. He did it with the Nelk boys. Um, and just done it with some others yeah. where he'll he did, what's that? I saw the Nelk boys interview him, yeah. And then Piers Morgan, so they were in that room in the library bar, and I've been in there. And um, library, if I remember right, is 85 Storm, so it's interesting with that. But the storm room, so you're in the, the storm bar, and the painting there with him in his tennis, or some of us, I thought it was tennis or cricket, and some have said it's cricket, yachting, right. but it's whatever it is, it's that white jumper. Yes. And um, so it's called Donald J. Trump. Well, that's it's it's called it, the, the name of the painting is is the visionary. Which comes to 132 in numbers. Which comes to JFK, JR is alive and it comes to Princess Diana. And then it's Donald J. Trump, which is simple geometry, 148, time traveler, 148, Emmett Brown, 148, Jetson White, 148. 
but you add those together, it comes to 313. 313 comes to lift the veil from your eyes. Now, if you take your mind back to the events of JFK in 1963, there's a prude of film, the shot, the kill shot, and there's an X that marks the spot on the Nightmare on Elm Street, it's Elm Street, Nightmare on Elm Street, Kruger, you know, the imposter that comes up in a few films in the Highlander and other stuff. Anyway, X marks the spot. And we're in the year of X because it's 2024. 24th letter is X. Right. Twitter went from 115. 115 is the way you spell Twitter, 11 5 November. Changed it to X, X is 24. So it's 11 5 24, which is the election. But 313 comes to lift the veil from your eyes, which is a biblical reference, but it you know it can be a reference for anything that is revealing the truth. There's a Pruder film with the actual kill shot with, with JFK. When that happens, guess what number that frame of the film is? 24. 313. 313. And because 313. it's, because it's yeah. a palindrome, does that have any other additional significance? Yeah. So if you do, yeah, if you, okay. So if you do 313, well, it does actually. So if you reverse it, if, if you do three, if you invert it, so instead of it being three, 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 one, three, um, lift the valve from your eyes, the, the kill shot fr frame number. So there's a different reference to there with JFK. So Tr Trump's got that in there, and it's like 313. What's 313? I'll look at the Zapruder film. It's that's the kill shot. So it all ties back to that and how that will get reversed. But if you if you mirror it, if you invert it, 313 will be 131. And 131 comes to John F. Kennedy, 131. Um and also, if you take it even further, if you do lift the veil from your eyes, 313, but then you add the word day, which is 30, which is AU, which is gold, plus AG, silver, 22 plus 8, add them together as 30, day, baby. That would come to 343, which comes to President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, which comes to um, the New Jerusalem, the mothership. And one dropped the thing of the century of the golden the heavenly city right at the end of the show but let's so if you do let's have a look at this so if you do three uh 313 add yeah so that comes to 444 so if you do 313 plus 131 so the inverse of that that comes to 444 which is an angel number that's you know um I that's half of 888 which is the super duper number Right. That's why all the gambling companies use it. Uh, Donald J. Trump. So here, the art of the deal, 138. Uh, 148, oh. Donald J. Trump, 148. If you do that in Hebrew, Gematria, if you do Donald J. Trump in Hebrew, Hebrew Gematria, it comes to 888. So I don't know if you knew this because you're not here in the States, but when you get text messages from Trump, it's 88022. Yeah. Yeah, which is Trump Mega. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which is Trump deal. So eight so because it is, you're right. So it's on his on his I, I've noticed that on his on his uh platform when he talks, when he's doing a speech, he's got the text. Eight, eight, zero, 22. And eight eight is Trump, twenty-two is MAGA, twenty-two is deal, so it's Trump deal. You add them together, is one ten president, the Christ, one ten, the power, one ten. What was Trump's father's name, it was Frederick Christ Trump. It would probably be a bit too much to say Donald John Christ Trump. So they just called him John instead, you know. But mirror John is 47. Atomic number for gold uh, for silver is 47. You mirror it, it comes to 74. 74 is Gematria, 74 is Jesus, 74 is DeLorean, the time travel machine. But even that zero, so people like one will say drop the zero, and you can. I often think I keep them in most of the time because it, it's just the way Trump does it, simple Gematria. The zero comes to 64, which comes to Israel, which comes to Zion, which comes to Jubilee, which comes to Tenet, the film that we were talking about, Tenet. And that's a palindrome, T-E-N-E-T, -E -E right. which is Angel 10. It's Tenet, you know, Angels 39. Um, could be Angel E-T as well. <laughs> I think of extraterrestrial. But if you do 64, if you divide it by itself, it's eight times eight. And the Beatles sung that song, we used to love me when I'm 64. Why do they choose 64? I put it out on that tweet today about 
the one with Kim and the two Kims I tweeted out to with Trump going down to Yuma. And if lift the veil from your eyes, so if so if 310 is November 5th, 310 this year, the 310th day of the year, so 313. Um three sorry, I should say, yeah, 313, lift the veil from your eyes. The kill shot with JFK. Yeah, Remember, 20, next month's the spots on Elm Street. It's a like it's a reversal of everyone's nightmares because everyone's had that thing with the Kurgan with the Kruger. That's all going to be done away with. And eight 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 is the super powerful number for those that are listening. Um, three thirteen will be three days after three ten, so that will take you to November eight. Eleven eight comes to one one eight, which comes to the storm. And one one eight was the very first number I got when I met Ivanka. My cousin Paul had died just a week or so before. His day of birth was 11-8. It was 1-1-8. It was January 18th. And I met people with the same day of birth as his. And one of them might have been a one nineteen, which is Nikola Tesla Redemption. But I knew he was talking to me through this bookcase. We've done this, the bookcase. He was talking to me through the bookcase, the Christopher Nolan bookcase. And Paul Bushnell comes to one forty three, comes to November 5th. We're in a matrix, Matt. Might be. We're in, we're in some kind of simulation. We're coming in some it, kind of beautiful simulation, you know? Something's going on. Something's going Something's on. Something's going on. That's it. Something's going on. But uh, I'll leave you with this because I got a I got a one o'clock, but uh uh we, we ran into a guy in the neighborhood who drives a DeLorean. Really? Uh uh my buddy says to him, he says, Hey, um, that thing must be a real chick magnet. And he's like, nah, man. He's like, this thing's really a dude magnet. Because <laughs> all the guys <laughs> like the car. <laughs> it would be, yeah. Yeah. All the guys that love terrible. the film. You mentioned the girls love the film. They just don't know what it is. The girls that he probably wants to pull just don't have an idea what it is. Until, it would get re- it's big. Well, the the the, uh, the play's out now, isn't it? You know, the, the Broadway show. I want to see the fourth one that they're coming out with. I think that's, you know what, I want to see a fourth one, but I have a feeling the one that you mentioned, I think that's a really well done um, fan trailer, I think. But it I looks like, but it looks I like know, it looks good because I saw it as well. And I, I was like, I think maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's what it is. I think it's a really well done fi- a fan trailer. Yeah, it's I think. Michael, J. Fo- Michael J. Fox is in the trailer. Uh well, the one I've seen was this fan one, but it was well done. But if you found something different, send it to me, and I'll have. Maybe I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm. I'm curious, but I really hope they're they're working on that because that would be. I'd like to. Incredible. And talking of, so this is the other one. So you t- you know you said about trains, and I talked about Trump at the beginning with the Trump train. Trump train is one fifty. Pull the plug. One fifty. Um. There's a Trump train in Back to the Future. So there's the 310 to Yuma because they get on the train, getting the prisoners on the train. That's all part. That's what it is. That's why that reference of that of that tweet that like Kim put out today. But guess what the number of the train is in Back to the Future? The third one? <laughs> the, yeah, the third one. There's a, there's, a, there's a name or there's a number on the train and it's telling us something specific. Okay. I'm going to rewatch that series. One of these 131. Days. 131, okay. Which is John F. Kennedy, which is the mirror of what you said. Is, is, it, is there anything else to it? It's like, yeah, well, the mirror of it, the mirror reflection of 313 is uh, is 131. And I have a feeling maybe what they're telling us, because it's 444 four, four, and you're together. The super powerful number is the 888. They're all powerful, but that one's the, the super doobie. I wonder if um, it might be that we're halfway... We might be at that junction, the crossroads, because there's a there's a crossroads in the end of Back to the Future Three when it comes in as a train. Right. So it it might be that we get halfway and then we start and everything starts to super make sense and we go from there. I don't know, but something's coming. Interesting. And there's an X about to form, a, a delayed X about to form over the America continent with the uh, with the eclipse in four or five days. So, all right. Anyway, buddy. As always, it's always great fun with you. It's always awesome. Great. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you You're to welcome, your man. always always interesting people that call in. I always have fun. So thank you. Yeah. Call in. What's Matt's number again? 480-725-0536. It's my direct phone number. Brilliant. Call in and before whoever, it gets whoever I need to answer, if, if I don't answer my phone, just leave a voicemail because usually what I'll do is 
they get transcribed to my email. I can listen, even yeah. if it's a Saturday or Sunday. And usually I'll just call you back from my cell. I don't mind giving out my cell phone, you know? Yeah. But my oh, yeah, that book. lady on Twitter that put a thing, she asked, did she get Yeah, back I you? apologize. I just, you know, if, if you don't leave a message, I may not get the call, you know? So leave, make sure you leave a voicemail. With and, your name uh, and number and he'll yeah, get back to you. number. You know, I usually get the number transcribed anyway, but yeah, whoever that is, I, I greatly It apologize. can't hurt to leave your number though on the voicemail. can't hurt to leave your number. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Tom. Cheers, Matt. Adios. Hey, buddy. God bless. See you soon. God Bye. bless. See you soon. Bye.